It's a given that Northern Territorians are a robust and resilient lot. But Darwin farmer Gavin Howie has got to be the toughest of the tough. He's positively superhuman. Not that he knew that nine months ago when he somehow fell into a turf cutting machine. Little imagination is needed to picture the scene. One of his legs was severed at the thigh, the other almost completely ripped off. Even worse, Gavin was alone when the accident happened and a long way from help. But no worries, this knockabout bloke simply refused to die. Now, thanks to some extraordinary medical technology you have to see to believe, he's not only back on the farm, he's back on his feet. Out the back of Humpty Doo, the black Australian kites soar high in the thermals of top end skies, and a farmer quietly goes about his business. But this is no ordinary rural scene. We're looking at a medical marvel matched with a story of extraordinary human endurance. That's because on this very spot, only a few months ago, Gavin Howey lost both his legs in a horrendous accident. Today, he might be hobbling, but he's actually walking again and getting better every day. You're still doing the same job, you're still on the farm, so you've got to confront it, don't you? Yeah, well, it, yeah it doesn't really worry me too much. You know? I, I won't be doing it again in a hurry, that's for sure. You won't be allowed to. No. Your missus won't let you. No. <laughs> I'm probably lucky that I am talking to you now. Turf farmer Gavin was out mowing the grass, a task he'd done a thousand times before. But for some reason, this day, he got off the tractor awkwardly. Before he knew it, his legs became entangled in the machinery. I don't know whether I got out of the tractor and bumped a lever or something and fell, because I must have... I didn't go through the, right through the middle of it there. I went, must have been through the outside here somewhere, so I must have been able to get out of the way enough to um, not go the full way under. Otherwise, it would have been more than my legs missing, I'd say. It's hard to understand why you lost two legs here. I could only guess what happened, and that's why I got myself far enough where I was tripped over or something and sort of clambered out the way on the ground and just got far enough out of the way that only my legs were back that way, back that went under the mower. So initially you're not in agony? No, it took about a guess, I reckon it would have been an hour or so, or more, even an hour and a half before the pain kicked in, so. But I think it was more uncomfortable, so I don't know. I can remember trying to get up because I didn't want to lay down anymore. It was a sight too ghastly to describe. Alone on the huge green plain, disoriented and bleeding to death from wounds where his legs used to be, Gavin somehow managed to call for help. And your phone, which you needed to call help, was where? There was drag marks, so whether, if I have tripped over or whatever, my phone has come out of my pocket and the, and the mowers dragged me. They said 15 metres, they could see where I crawled back to my phone. Come on. His wife Lauren and their two children were away on holidays in Western Australia. What do you think happened? And I know he um, tried to get up and walk over to his phone, but then realised there wasn't much there to, to go with. So he crawled over and grabbed his phone and rang his mate Sam for help. I've said this, right, Sam? Yeah. yeah. Sam Thurkle is Gavin's best mate. He farms a neighbouring property and was the first person on the scene. Straight after getting Gavin's distress call, Sam alerted the ambulance. You were here before the ambos. Yeah. So you're the first bloke to see him. What, what's the scene when you get there? Oh, it's pretty messy. Yeah. Um, you know, I didn't know whether I was going to find him dead or alive. Such dramatic events can create lifelong friendships, especially in the bush. Lauren and Gavin will never forget the help they got from the local ambos. When you first got the call, what did you hear? Oh, we initially just dispatched to a, 
person run over by a lawnmower. Which... With a leg laceration, <coughs> I think it was. It turned out to be a lot more than merely a laceration. The gruesome scene paramedics Aaron Brooks and Anthony Kwiatkowski encountered remains forever etched in their memories. And they held out little hope for their patient. When we first got there, we saw uh, Gavin laying on his back and we thought this is a, a fatality straight up. Um, <clears throat> got out and got closer and noticed that his chest was rising and falling, so he was breathing. And then when he actually said g'day, that he was fully conscious. He said g'day? He said a g'day, yeah. His left leg was um, obsolete at that time and his right leg was still attached somewhat, but um, just an absolute mess. You could see then that it was not going to be salvageable from what was left of it, but... Um, so clearly he's, he's going to need new legs. Absolutely. From the start, Gavin defied the odds. He lived. When his condition had stabilised, he was flown from Darwin to Sydney's Macquarie University Hospital, where he got lucky. Gavin was put in the care of New South Wales Australian of the Year, Associate Professor Munjid Al Madaris. So what we're going to do, we're going to lengthen this leg. Yeah. I might just have a look at the wound and if there is anything that needs to be tied here, I'll yeah. do that. Okay. The Iraqi-born orthopaedic surgeon has treated thousands of amputees, restoring them to active life despite the most debilitating injuries. But Gavin was one of the worst cases he'd ever seen. So, um, especially dealing with a person like Gavin, where he not just lost both limbs above the knee, but also he lost them very high up yeah. above the knee. So that add a significant complexity to the physical condition. Surgery is often a clinical business, but Munjid always makes a point of getting to know his patients. That's because his treatments take months and include multiple complex surgeries. Any questions? Uh, no. His first thing he said to me is that when he can go back uh, on the field uh, to farm, farm the land. If I'm a person that make a decision about who would I give the, the treatment for, he will be contributing to society back again. Uh, that is the aim uh, and that's the goal that we need to achieve. It's the morning of Gavin's operation and we find our patient boning up on his orthopaedic surgeon's autobiography. So he knows he's in good hands. The man he does for people as well. He just goes over and above. He just wants to help that many people that, yeah, he just keeps going and going. Don't know where he gets his energy. Munjit has refined a technique called osseointegration. Rather than the temporary attachment of an artificial limb, a titanium rod is permanently inserted into bone. In Gavin's case, into the femur or the thigh bone. This technology is all internal. It doesn't involve any, uh, any external parts. It's all inside the bone, inside the body. While the new limb can still be detached if required, the connection point has now become part of the human skeleton. Now part of the body, the attachment gradually develops connections with Gavin's nervous system. That's it. Thank you. Thanks very much. Push down through that toe. Fast forward six months. Gavin has had four surgeries. Munjid has done everything in his power. You're not going to cry, are you? No, no. no. He's already made me cry enough. <laughs> it's extraordinary, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's now up to Gavin to do the rest and to learn to walk again. You're a bit short. I'll get there, don't worry. <laughs> OK. <I'll get> there. <laughs> nah, it's better to start short. Yeah. That's good. And now I understand that he is, his height is totally adjustable. Yeah, so he can be much shorter or he can be much taller. After months in hospital, the aim now is to get Gavin back on the land and to show Munjid the Northern Territory. I'm really looking forward to come to see your pet. He has a crocodile pet, I think. <laughs> Coming up... Wow, what a place! How are you? A doctor's top-end house call... This yeah. is how you get him to jump up. Uh, Gav, it's not a good idea, mate. 
helps this courageous farmer... How does it feel on the grass? A bit uneven sometimes. ...return to the land and the life he loves. Life's got to go on. You've got to get back on your feet. Yeah, yeah. That's next on 60 Minutes. Dr Munjit al Madaris has travelled more than 3,000 kilometres to make a house call on his patient, the recovering amputee farmer, Gavin Howey. But for the doctor, the NT is not entirely unknown territory. When I got in the car uh, and um, travelled outside the airport, the minute I saw the red ground, um, it brought back uh, very uh, gruesome memories, I must admit. Munjid has been here before. Now one of our leading orthopaedic surgeons, he was once a refugee from Saddam Hussein's Iraq. I spent almost a year in Curtin Detention Centre and the, the environment looks very similar here. But then, uh, you know, everything changed the minute I saw the turf farm. Wow, what a place. How are you, mate? Good to see you, my friend. Yeah, well, You're walking. How are you? How are Fortunately you? for all of us, and for Gavin in particular, <laughs> Munjid was eventually freed from detention and accepted into our country. Who says doctors don't make house calls anymore? In this case, it's for a bit of post-operative fine-tuning. As you make your gate narrower, the less energy you use, yeah. you need to trust the leg. Yeah, <laughs> I know that. They might be artificial limbs driven by small robotic motors, but as we see this day, Gavin can actually sense and feel the nature of the ground beneath his new feet. How does it feel on the grass? So it's a bit, because uh, you, you get a bit uneven sometimes in the grass. Yeah. But Do you get yeah. the feeling? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It feels Nerves now are growing in a different way where they can give a feedback from the ground. So he knew so, what the ground felt like? Yeah, he definitely. He I mean, could tell can, gravel from turf. He feel that the, uh, the, the grass and he feel when he walk on concrete, he feel when he walk on carpet. And this ability will grow until it maximises around a year or two. The whole idea is to give people their independence uh, and give people their dignity back. And, um, and independence being dignity. All work and no play might make Munjit a dull boy. So the other reason the doctor has come to the Territory is his fascination with crocodiles. And Gavin knows just where to find them. We'll go about 22 k's down and there's a uh... There's an island in the middle of the river. Yep. There's an estimated 250,000 crocodiles in the Northern Territory. It's got a dead cow, big, big one there. Wow. That's about one croc per person, and a lot of them are here in the Adelaide River. This yep. is how you get them to jump up. Oh, uh, Gav, it's not a good idea, mate. <laughs> you lost your legs, we don't want you to lose your arms. <laughs> Gavin's story reminds us that farming can be a dangerous business. An average of 41 farm workers are killed in Australia every year, and there are thousands of injuries, including loss of limbs. How can you plan for such a miraculous recovery? <laughs> no, well, uh, when you've got a lot of people around you helping you, and family, good family, good friends, and our workers here, that's made it so much easier, you know. Yeah, it's a, it's a big operation and the grass keeps growing, doesn't it? Yeah, that's it. So, so you life, can't... Life's got to go on. You've got to get back on your feet. Yeah, that's it. OK, all done. So now we're nice and tight. Do you want to check that one guy in? Munjid's dream is to make the cutting-edge technology that works so well for Gavin accessible to all Australians who require it. If you look at a person like Gavin, um, the minute before his accident, he was probably thinking about what he's going to have for dinner. And then all of a sudden, everything changed. His life turned upside down. His family life turned upside down. Munjid believes there's a rip-off here, and Australia is paying far too much for overseas-produced bionic limbs. It can be extremely expensive. Uh, so I think Gavin bought his legs for over $100,000 each. Around. His mission is to see them made here. 
this is the next um, endeavor that, that, that I'm, I'm aiming at, uh, at doing, and that's by trying to manufacture these, um, uh, these limbs locally and drop the price down. He makes the point that these tools of his trade are much more expensive than the master himself. So you're not expensive, but the, the, the hardware is. Believe me, I'm very cheap. <laughs> we don't, um, um, a lot of the time, I mean, I do a lot of this, uh, this work pro bono, and a lot of, depends on if a person is a pensioner or have financial dis difficulty, we do that, we do that at, um, at no, no, so uh, out of pocket. When the world is tossing me. What we've seen here is so much more than brilliant surgery and ingenious new technology. We will brave the wind and water. It's about the restoration of a human life. It's about returning a father to his children, a husband to his wife, and a farmer to the land. There's no point being down about anything. You just, well, it's not gonna get you nowhere, isn't it? You could make what you can in life, so that's what, that's what we're doing now. Hello, I'm Charles Woolley. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.